Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Brad Hamilton and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a window explosion like in this photo using the Chaos add-on for Blender 3D. Let's get started. So go ahead and open up Blender and first we're going to add a camera by pressing Shift A. Now let's just adjust our camera view a bit to match the photo we're going to add to our environment. And now we're going to add a background photo that we're going to add our explosion to. So go to the background images tab here. Go ahead and check the box for background images and then find the image you want to add your explosion to. Now we can adjust our camera to match the angle of how our background photo was taken. Something like this should look pretty good. All right, so now we can go ahead and add our initial particle systems. So let's navigate to the Chaos tab here, where we can add our particle systems. And before we add any particle systems to our scene, we want to select where on the timeline we want the explosion to start. So let's say we want our explosion to start at frame 10, and select that part of the timeline. And now we will click our 3D cursor where we want our particle explosion added to our scene. So let's just click by the window here for now. Okay, so now we can choose the particle systems and debris we want added to our simulation. So let's go ahead and select dynamic smoke fire, glass particles, sparks, concrete, and dirt. Now let's go to our particle parameters here and adjust our fuel start amount to say three and make our fuel end amount five. And we'll leave everything else at its default setting. Then press directional burst operator to add the particle systems to your scene. And now, as you can see, our particle systems as well as our smoke domain have been added to our scene automatically. Okay, so before we bake any part of our simulation, we want to check the particle systems and position them in our scene accordingly. So let's just move our domain cube to another layer. So just press M and move it down. And as you can see, we can play through our particle systems to see what they are doing in our scene already. So let's go to camera view here. And we'll just tweak the position of the particle systems as well as the camera to match the background photo. As you can see, the smoke particles only exist for the first few frames of our blast because we want the smoke particles to be a more sudden reaction inside of our scene. Each debris field that Chaos adds into your scene can be selected separately and if you want to change any of the debris field simulations, just go to the particle tab or the physics tab if you want to adjust the fuel settings of the smoke particle system. As you can see when we go to this tab and scroll through the timeline, Chaos has automatically keyframed the fuel particle settings based on our initial particle parameters. But if you want to make adjustments, this is where you would do that. Anyways, this is looking pretty good here for an initial setup, so let's go ahead to our second layer and move our smoke domain back to our first layer. Now we want to position our smoke domain so that the area we have our smoke particles is surrounded by it in order to bake our smoke simulation. This is looking pretty good here, so now we can go to our physics panel, down to our smoke cache, and as you can see, our smoke cache is grayed out right now, so to solve that problem, simply save the file where you would like on your computer. So go to File Save As and save your file. And now as you can see, we are free to bake our simulation. But before we do that, we want to set the start and end frame of our simulation. For this tutorial, we'll just simulate from frame 1 to 60, so we'll go ahead and change this here. And now we can just press Bake All Dynamics and wait for your computer to bake. Alright, so now we have an interesting looking medium resolution smoke simulation here. This is already looking pretty cool. Let's go ahead and look at our explosion through our camera here by clicking View Camera. And one of the best ways to view a smoke sim in real time is by using the OpenGL Render Active Viewport button here. So let's go ahead and click that. And now if we go to Render, Play Rendered Animation, we can see a preview version of our explosion in real time. This is one of the best ways to see if you want to make any major changes to your simulation before you make a high resolution bake of the same thing. It's looking pretty good here, but let's just adjust the position of our explosion in our environment. And you may be concerned about the overlap on the window here, 
but that is something that can be rotored out in compositing where you can create a mask layer inside of your scene. Okay, so before we adjust our materials of our smoke, we need to change a few of our render settings as well as add a 3D environment. So let's go to our render panel here and then scroll down to sampling and I'll set this to 64, but you may not need this much for your first test renders. So for testing, maybe just put sampling at around 10. And we'll go ahead and set clamp direct and clamp indirect to three and then select our seed stopwatch here for some noise variation. Now we'll go to our geometry tab here and change the step size to 0.01 and the maximum steps to 260. Now go to the light paths and increase the volume bounces to at least four, but I recommend around six to eight bounces for the best results. Check the box for the motion blur and then under the film tab, make sure that the transparent box is selected. Now let's go ahead and add some light to our scene to light the simulation. We'll press Shift A and add two Hemi sources, one to light the smoke from the right of the camera at a high angle, and one to backlight the smoke from the back left. Now we'll go to our sky panel here and add some environmental lighting to our scene. So go ahead and click on Use Nodes and then click here and select Sky Texture. And let's go to Camera View so that we can see the sky in our background photo. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to match the preview panel of our sky here as close as we can to our background photo. So just play with these settings until you get a fairly close result. Now let's go ahead and add a plane to use as a ground in our scene. So press Shift A and then position this plane where the street would be in our background photo. Let's just press S and scale it up. And we'll go to the materials tab and add a diffuse material for this plane and then just select a dark color in the photo so that it's more like the color of the street in our environment. This ground plane is going to block a lot of the light from the bottom of our environment so that our explosion is lit more like our photograph's environment. One more thing we should do is go to our scene tab and change the color management options. Let's set the view to filmic, the look to base contrast, and the color space to filmic log for a higher dynamic range view of our simulation. Now let's go to rendered view. And while the materials aren't dialed in yet, for a low resolution version of our explosion, it's looking okay. But let's tweak a few material settings. Go ahead and select the domain cube and drag open a new window here. And we'll go to node view in this window and then do a rendered view on the first window. Now this is where we can play with how our smoke looks given the initial bake. I don't want any red or yellow in this explosion, so I'll go ahead and delete the red and yellow points of our color ramp here. So we're just left with a gradient of orange, white, and black. Now I recommend going about the smoke material from top to bottom here, but it does require some playing with to get what you're looking for. First, select your smoke color. We'll just darken the smoke a little bit, but you can choose any color in the RGB spectrum. Now I recommend going to a later frame in the explosion, like that which is shown right now, to adjust the smoke multiply node for the density. The value you need can depend on your smoke bake, but essentially the higher the multiply node, the more thick the smoke is. So just experiment with this value until you get an appropriate thickness. Then let's go to an earlier frame where there is still some fire in our simulation so that we can adjust the properties of our flames. Play with this first color ramp to get a variety of gradients and detail in your fire material, and then use the multiply node here on the bottom to push more or less brightness into your flame through your smoke. For example, if we change this to 10,000, it will push a lot of brightness into our flames. Keep in mind that if this value gets too big, you can bring down the brightness to the orange point on the bottom color ramp to get more detail into your fire. We'll put our multiply node at around 2000 and leave it there for now. Feel free to adjust the black point on the left of our bottom color ramp here to control how much the smoke surrounds the fire simulation. As you can see, the more we bring this to the right, the more the smoke engulfs the flames. But we'll leave it somewhere around here. Now let's go to our render tab here. We'll change the samples to 4 at 50% resolution and do a test render to see what we're getting so far. 
So it's looking pretty cool here. So let's go ahead and bake a higher resolution version of this explosion for a more realistic result. So let's go to our 3D view here and select our smoke domain again. And one thing we want to do is actually add a little bit more defined smoke trails to our blast by increasing our additional resolution value. So let's go to our physics panel here while we have our smoke domain selected and then go to smoke cache and free the bake. And then under smoke adaptive domain, let's just increase the additional resolution to 30. Increasing this resolution is going to make your domain a little bit bigger. We'll just scale down our domain cube to compensate. Now to carve up and add more detail to our simulation, let's go to our high resolution panel here and let's increase the divisions to three and change the strength to 1.5. Keep in mind this will slow down your simulation bake a lot, so if your computer is slow, you may want to leave this at 1 or 2. Anyway, now let's just go down and press Bake All Dynamics and give some time for your computer to work, and we'll come back in a bit. Alright, so we're back and our explosion is looking much more detailed here. Let's do one more render preview here and see how it's looking in real time. And as you can see, our smoke trails are a little bit more defined here and we're getting some pretty awesome high resolution looking smoke. If you would like, feel free to tweak your smoke domain and materials again in your node editor, but I'm going to leave my values pretty much the same as before, with the exception of boosting my density to 450 and increasing my smoke contrast to one. Now let's go ahead and prepare to render our explosion asset. So let's boost our resolution here to 100%. Under our output panel here, I recommend using the OpenEXR file format for a nice looking high dynamic range result. I recommend boosting your samples to between 40 and 64. Then again under output, find a folder to save your file and name it. And finally, make sure that your timeline at the bottom here includes the frames you want rendered and press render animation. Anyways, once you rendered out your animation, you are ready to composite. Remember that almost half of your explosion look is in the compositing process, so be sure to add some glow and color correction when you composite your final shot. I do have one compositing video out on this channel as well, so be sure to check that out. Anyways guys, I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions. I'll see you guys next time.